Hey guys, welcome back to Detroit, Michigan. Lisa Martin and John Furrier here live with theCUBE at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con North America. John, it's been a great day. This is day one of our coverage of three days of coverage. Kubernetes is growing up, it's yeah. maturing. Yeah, we got three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage, it's all about Kubernetes, we're hearing about security, large scale, cloud native at scale, that's the big focus. This next segment's going to be really awesome. You have a fast growing private company and a practitioner, big name, blue chip practitioner, building out next gen cloud, first transforming, then building out the next level. This is classic, what we call super cloud-like like interview. Uh, it's going to be great, I'm looking forward to this. Anytime we can talk about super cloud. All right, please welcome back one of our alumni. Haseeb Bujani is here, the CEO of Rafay. Great to see you. Santosh Good. Pasula also joins us, the global head of cloud SRE at Mass Mutual. Guys, great to have you on the program. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having me. So Haseeb, you've been on theCUBE many times. You were on just recently. With the momentum that is around us today with the maturation of Kubernetes, the collaboration of the community, the recognition of the community, what are some of the things that you're excited about with, on, on day one of the show? Wow, so many new companies. I mean, there are companies that I don't know who are here, and I, I, I live in this industry, and I'm seeing companies that I don't know, which is a good thing. I mean, it means that the, the community is growing, but at the same time, I'm also seeing another thing, which is I have met more enterprise representatives at this show than other QCons. Like when we hung out at, uh, you know, in, in Valencia, for example, or even you know, other places, it hasn't been this many people, which means, and this is, this is a good thing, that enterprises are now taking Kubernetes seriously. It's not a toy. It's not just for developers. It's enterprises who are now investing in Kubernetes as a foundational component, right, for their applications going forward. And that, to me, is very, very good. De well, definitely becoming foundational. Yeah. Well, you guys got a great, um, we had many interviews at theCUBE, and you got a practitioner here with you. You guys are both pioneering kind of what I call the next gen cloud. First you got to get through gen one, which you guys done at Mass Mutual extremely well. Take us through the story of your transformation, because you're on the, at the front end now of that next inflection point, but take us through how you got here. You've had a lot of transformation success at Mass Mutual. Right. So, um, I was actually talking about this topic a few, few minutes back, right, and, and the whole cloud journey in, in big companies, large financial institutions, healthcare industry, or, 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 or insurance sector, it takes generations of leadership to get to, get to that perfection level. And, and ideally, the, the, the cloud for strategy starts in, and then, and then how, do you, how do you standardize and optimize cloud, right? You know, that, that, that's the second gen altogether. And then operationalization of the cloud. And uh, especially if, uh, you know, if you're talking about Kubernetes, um, you know, in the traditional world, um, you know, almost every company is running middleware and their applications in middleware and then containerization is a topic that, come, that came in and uh, Docker is, is uh, you know, basically the runtime containerization. So that came in first and uh, from Docker, um, you know, eventually when companies started adopting Docker, Docker Swarm is one of the technologies that they adopted and uh, eventually when, when when we were taking it to a more complicated uh, application implementations or modernization efforts, that's when Kubernetes played a key role. And, and uh, as Hasee was pointing out, you know, like we never saw so many companies working on Kubernetes, so that should tell you one story, right? How fast Kubernetes is growing and how important it is for your cloud strategy. So. And your success now, and what are you thinking about now? What's on your agenda now as you look forward? What's on your plate? What are you guys doing right now? So we are, we are past the stage of uh, um, you know, proof of concepts, proof of technologies, pilot implementations. We are actually playing it, um, you know, the real game now. So um, um, in the past I used the quote, you know, like uh, hello world to real world. So we are actually playing in the real world, not, not in the hello world anymore. Now, now this is where the real time challenges um, will, will pop up, right? So you, if you're talking about standardizing it, and then optimizing the cloud, and how do you put your governance structure in place, how do you make sure your regulations are met, you know, the, the, the demands that come out of regulations are met, and, and how, how are you going to scale it? And, and, and while scaling, how are you going to keep up with all the governance and regulations that come with it? So we are in that stage today. Haseeb, talk about, you talked about the great evolution of what's going on at Mass Mutual. Haseeb, talk a little bit about 
Who, you mentioned one of the things that's surprising you about this KubeCon in Detroit is that you're seeing a lot more enterprise folks here. Who's deciding in the organization, in your customer conversations, who are the decision makers in terms of adoption of Kubernetes these days? Is that elevating? Hmm, well this guy. <laughs> um, it's usually, um, you know, one of the things I'm seeing here, and John and I have talked about this in the past, this idea of a platform organization and enterprises. Uh, so consistently, what I'm seeing is, you know, somebody, a CTO, CIO level, uh, you know, individual is making a decision. I have multiple internal BUs who are now modernizing applications. They're individually investing in DevOps, and this is not a good investment for my business. I'm going to centralize some of this capability so that we can all benefit together. And that team is a, essentially a platform organization, and they're making Kubernetes a shared services platform so that everybody else can come and, and, and sort of you know, consume it. So what that means to us is, our customer is a platform organization and their customer is a developer. So we have to make two constituencies successful. Our customer, who's providing a multi-tenant platform, and then their customer, who's a developer. Both have to be happy. If you don't solve for both you know, constituencies, you're not going to be successful. You're targeting the builder of the infrastructure and the consumer of that infrastructure. Yes, sir. On it the has to side. be both. Uh, exactly right, right? So, so that, look, honestly, that it, it, you know, it takes iterations to figure these things out, right? But this is a consistent theme that I am seeing. In fact, what I would argue now is that every enterprise should be really stepping back and thinking about what is my platform strategy? Because if you don't have a platform strategy, you're going to have a bunch of different teams who are doing different things, and some will be successful, and look, some will not be. And that is not good for business. Yeah, and, and Stitch, I want to get to you. You mentioned that your transformation was what you look forward, and your title, Global Head of Cloud SRE. Okay, so SRE, we all know, came from Google, right? Everyone wants to be like Google, <laughs> but, but no one wants to be like Google, right? Because no one is Google. Google's a unique There's thing. only one but Google. But they had the dynamic and the power dynamic of one person to large scale set of servers or infrastructure. That concept is, 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 can be portable, but, but the situation isn't. So Borg became Kubernetes, that's inside baseball. So you're doing essentially what Google did at their scale, you're doing for Mass Mutual. That's right. kind of what's happening. Is that kind of how I see it? And you guys are playing in there, partnering. So um, I, I totally agree. Google introduced SRE, Site Reliability Engineering. And, and uh, if you take uh, you know, the traditional transformation of the roles, right, in the past it was called operations and then DevOps came in and then SRE is, is the new buzzword and the future could be something like product engineering, right? And, and, and in this journey, um, you know, here is what I tell um, you know, folks on my side, like what worked for Google might not work for a financial company, might not work for yeah. an insurance company. So, so, so it's, it's okay to use the word SRE, but at the end of the day that SRE has to be tailored down to, to your requirements and, and, and the customers that you serve and the technology that you serve. Yep. And this is, this is why I'm coming back to this platform engineering. At the end of the day, I think SRE just translates to you're going to have a platform engineering team. Because you got to enable developers to be producing more code, faster, better, cheaper, yep. guardrails, yep. policy, so that this, it's kind of becoming the you serve the business, which is now the developers. IT used to serve the business yep. back in the old days. Hey, the IT serves the business, yep. which was a terminal. Yeah. Which is actually true now. IT, yeah. The new IT serves the developers, yeah. which is the business. Which is the business. Because if digital yeah. transformation goes to completion, yep. the company is the app. Yep. And, and uh, um, you know, the, the hard line between development and operations, right? So, so that's thinning down. Over the time, you know, like that, that line might disappear. And, and, and that's where SR is fitting in. Yeah, and then building platform engineering to scale the enablement up. That, what is, so what's the key challenges? You guys are, are both building out together this new transformational direction. What's new and what's the same? The same is probably the business results, but what's the new dynamic involved in rolling it out and making people successful? You got the two constituents, the builders of the infrastructure and the consumers of the services on the other side. What's the new thing? So uh, the new thing, if, if I may go first, please, right? Please. So, um, the faster market to uh, you know value right that we are bringing to the table that's 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 very important you know business has an idea how do you get that idea implemented in terms of technology and 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 take it into real time so that journey we have cut down right with, with, with technologies like Kubernetes it makes it makes uh, you know an IT person's life so easy that 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 they can they can speed up the process in in, in, in a traditional way what used to take like a year or six months can be done in a month today, or, or less than that, right? So, so, 
there's definitely uh, speed, velocity, agility in general, and then flexibility, and then the automation that we put in, especially if you have to maintain like thousands of clusters. You know, these, these are today like, you know, it, it is possible uh, to, to make that happen with a click of a button. In the past, it used to take like, you know, probably, you know, a hundred, hundred person team, an operational team to do it, and a lot of time, but, but, but that automation is happening, you know. Uh, and we can get into the technology as much as possible, but, but uh, you know, blueprinting and all that stuff made it possible. We'll save that for another interview. We'll do a deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the end user on the other end, the consumer, doesn't have the patience that they once had, right? right? It's, exactly. I want this in my lab now. Now. How does the culture of Mass Mutual, how has it evolved to be able to deliver the velocity that your customers are demanding? So if, uh, um, once in a while, you know, it's important to step yourself into the customer's shoes and think it from their, from their, from their perspective. Um, business does not care how you're running your IT shop. What they care about is your stability of the product and the efficiencies of the product and, and, uh, and how, how, how easy it is to reach out to the customers and how well we are serving the customers, right? So whether I'm implementing Docker in the background, Docker Swarm or Kubernetes, you know, business doesn't even care about it. What they really care about it is, if your environment goes down, it's a problem. And, and, and if, you, if your environment or if your solution is not as efficient as the business needs, that's the problem, right? So, so at that point, the business will step in. So our job is to make sure, uh, you know, from, an, from a technology perspective, how fast you can make, implement it and how efficiently you can implement it. And at the same time, how do you play within the guardrails of security and compliance? So I was going to ask you if you have VMware in your environment, because um, a lot of clients compare what vCenter does for Kubernetes is really needed. I think that's what you guys got going on. I, I can say that, you're the vCenter of Kubernetes. I mean, as a, as an, that is a metaphor. A place to manage it all, it's all over one, one, one pane of glass, so to speak. Is that how you see success in your environment? So, virtualization has gone uh, a long way. Um, you know, where we started what we call bare metal servers and then we virtualized operating systems, now we are virtualizing applications and, and we are virtualizing platforms as well, right? So that's where Kubernetes plays a key. So you see the need for a vCenter-like thing for Kubernetes? There's definitely a need in the market. And, and uh, uh, it, the, the way you need to think is like, you know, let's say there is, there is an insurance company who actually implemented it. And, and they gain the market advantage, right? Now the, the, the competition wants to do it as well, right? So, so, so there's definitely a, a virtualization of application yeah. layer that, that, that's very critical, mm -hmm. and it's a, it's a critical component of a cloud strategy as a whole. See, you're too humble to say it, I'll say, you're like the vCenter of Kubernetes. Explain what yeah. that means in your turn. If I said that to you, what would you react? How would you react to that? Would you say so, BS or would you say on point? Maybe we should think about what does vCenter do today? Right? It's, it's, so in my opinion, by the way, I'll, I'll, vCenter in my opinion is one of the best platforms ever built. Like, ha, it's the best platform in my opinion ever built. It's, VMware did an amazing job because they took an IT engineer and they made him now be able to do storage management, networking management, VMs, multi-tenancy, access management, order, everything that you need to run a data center, you can do from a single, essentially single platform. From a utility so standpoint, home run. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Because you are now able to empower people to do way more. Well, why are we not doing that for Kubernetes? So the, the premise behind Rafi was, well, I should have IT engineers, same engineers, now they should be able to run fleets of clusters. That's what people at Mass Mutual are able to do now, right? So to that end now, you need cluster management, you need access management, you need blueprinting, you need policy management, you need, act, you know, all of these things that have happened before, chargebacks, they used to happen in, in vCenter, now they need to happen in other platforms, but for Kubernetes. So, yeah. should, do we do many of the things that vCenter does? Yes. Kind of, yeah. Are we a vCenter for Kubernetes? Yeah. That is a John Furrier question. All right, well, <laughs> I'll, 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 the speculation really comes back down to the earlier speed question. If you can take away the, the complexity and not make it more steps or change a tool chain or do something, then the devs move faster and the service layer that serves the business, the new organization, has to enable speed. So this, this is becoming a, a, a real discussion point in the industry is that, oh yeah, we've got new tools, look at the shiny new toy. But if it doesn't move the needle, does it help productivity for developers, and does it actually scale up the enablement? 
That's the question, so I'm sure you guys are thinking about this a lot. What's your reaction? Yeah, um, absolutely, and uh, one thing that just uh, you know, hit my mind is, think about uh, you know, the hoteling industry before Airbnb and after Airbnb, right? Or, or, or the taxi industry you know, before Uber and after Uber, right? So if I'm providing a platform, a Kubernetes platform for my application folks or for my application partners, they have everything ready. All they need to do is like, you know, build their application and deploy it and run it, right? They, 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 they don't have to worry about provisioning of the servers and then building the middleware on top of it and then you know, do a bunch of testing to make sure you know, they, they, they iron out all the, uh, all the compatibility issues and whatnot. Yep. Now, now today, all I, need, all I say is like, hey, you have a, we have a platform built for you. You just build your application and then deploy it in a development environment. That's where you put all the pieces of puzzle together, make sure you see your application working and then the next thing that you, that you do is like, you know, uh, you know, go, go to production. It. Ship it, go to production. <laughs> Press, yeah. go. Press the and ship it to Release it. Yeah. <laughs> so That's the Nirvana, but then we're there. I mean, we're there now, we're there. So we need to see the future because if, you, if that's the case, then the developers are the business. They have to be coding more features. They have to react to customers. They might see new business opportunities from a revenue standpoint that could be creatively built. Got low code, no code, headless systems. These things are happening where this, I call it the architectureless environment, where it's like you don't need architecture; it's already happening. Yeah, and, and on top of it, um, you know, if, if if someone has an idea, they want to implement an idea real quick, right? So, how do you do it, right? And and, and you don't have to struggle building an environment to implement your idea and test it in real time, right? So, so from an innovation perspective, you know, agility plays a key role. And, and uh, that, that's where the Kubernetes platforms, the platforms yeah. like Kubernetes plays. You know, Lisa, when we yeah. talked to Andy Jassy when he was the CEO of AWS, um, either one-on-one -on -one or on theCUBE, he always said, and this is kind of happening, companies are going to be builders, where it's not just utility, you need that table stakes to enable that new business idea. And so he did his last keynote, he did this big thing like, you know, think like your developers are the next entrepreneurial uh, revenue generators. I think that, I think, starting to see that. What do you think about that? Do you see that coming sooner than later? Or is that in, in sight? Or is that still ways away? I, I think it's already happening at a level, at a certain level. Um, now, now the question comes back to, um, you know, um, taking it to the reality, right? I mean, yeah. you, can, you can do your proof of concept, proof of technologies, and then, and then prove it out like, hey, I got a new idea, this idea is great. Yeah. It, it, and and it, it's to the business advantage, right? <laughs> but we really want to see it in production, live, where your customers are actually using it. <laughs> and the board meetings, hey, we got a new idea that came in, generating more revenue. Where'd that come from? Agile developer. Again, this is real. Yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah, I think both of you gentlemen said a word in, in your, as you were talking, you used the word guardrails. Right. I think uh, you know we're talking about agility, but you know the really important thing is look, these are enterprises, right? They have certain expectations. Guardrails is key, right? So it's automation with the guardrails. Yep. Guardrails are like children, you know, you yeah. know, shouldn't be hurt. You know, they're seen but not heard. Uh, <laughs> developers don't care about guardrails; they just want to go fast. They also bounce around a little key. bit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. off the guardrails. Yeah. <laughs> One thing we know that's not going to slow down is, is the expectations, right, of all the consumers of this—the devs, the business. The, the business top line, and of course the customers. So the ability to, to really, as your website says, I see, make life easy for platform teams is not trivial. And clearly what you guys are talking about here is you're, you're really an enabler of those platform teams, it sounds like to me. Yep. So great work guys, thank you so much for both coming on the program, talking about what you're doing together, how you're seeing the, the evolution of Kubernetes, why, and really what the focus should be on those platform teams. We appreciate all your time and your insights. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having us. Right. Thanks for our having pleasure. Us. For our guests and for John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live, KubeCon, CloudNativeCon from Detroit. We'll be back with our next guest in just a minute, so stick around.